Gilberto had been right about one thing. Training with the weapons was hard, and not just physically. Whoever would have thought about the proper ways to hold a truncheon? The staff? I guess I saw that as more like a sword or an unpointed spear. Anything that long clearly required technique. Almost all of what I learned was new, and with all the repetition in the lectures, the weapons classes were usually the most interesting. Laris, used properly, that truncheon is a far more effective weapon than a knife. Used properly, you're holding it like... I cannot even make a comparison. Most training sessions were like that. Initially, nothing I did was right. The same was true of almost everyone, except Tamra and Crystal. Gilberto said almost nothing to Tamra, except occasional suggestions. Crystal he paid more attention to, but not much. As far as any kind of blade went, she picked up what he had in mind immediately. Me? It was like I had two left thumbs. Laris, stop fighting yourself. Just relax. How many times I heard those words, I don't recall, but hear them I did, time after time. Once we had some basic idea of what we were doing, Gilberto began pairing us off, first against him or one of his apprentices, then occasionally against each other. Eventually, I found myself facing Tamra, not exactly in the field I had wanted. We stood on opposite sides of a white practice circle on the spongy green flooring. Outside, the late summer sky was overcast, which was the exception rather than the rule, and the light filtering through the long and high wall windows was grayish. Tamara smiled. Her face lit up when she smiled, but it was not a pleasant light at all. Rules, Magister Gilberto? The fingers of her heavy padded gloves tightened on the hard wood of the practice staff, the center part that was unpadded. Not that the padding on the ends was all that heavy. Her eyes were on me, as if she were studying some insect or a painting on a wall. A wisp of her flame-red hair peeked out from under the leather and wood of the padded practice helmet. Tamra, no blows to face, knees, elbows, or groin. I can live with that. I thought I could also, but I didn't like the look in Tamra's eyes or the instinctive ease with which she took her balanced stance. Then again, I overtopped her by nearly a head and probably had twice her physical strength. And I hadn't done that badly against De Morsel, one of Gilberto's apprentices, over the past days. Besides, Tamra deserved anything I could land on her, the arrogant bitch. Always so damned superior, as if she didn't really belong with mere danger geld trainees. I couldn't see as well as I would have liked. The helmet restricted my peripheral vision, but I felt as though Myrton had rasped his bed at Samuel. Samuel shook his head. Start when I tell you, and stop at the bell. Ready? Gilberto stepped out of the circle, then glanced at Tamra. Tamra? She nodded. Laris? I nodded without taking my eyes off Tamra. I didn't see why everyone thought a match between Tamra and me was such a big deal. She clearly had more experience, but I was stronger and almost as quick. Myrton probably bet on her because I'd trounced him in the last round. At least I was halfway decent at something. Go! Tamra circled to my right. I pivoted. <laughs> I barely managed to throw my staff up to block her first thrust. <laughs> <laughs> I danced back, still on the defensive. Her last blow crashed into my lower right ribs. Her staff moved like lightning bolts, flashing this way, forking back, always probing. Another blow to my ribs on the left. My staff slipped past hers and bounced off her upper leg. The next thing I knew, I was on the floor, stars in my eyes. That's sufficient, I trust, Magister Gilberto? Sufficient. Tamra. I squinted and sat up, trying to still the swirling inside my brain. Are you all right, Laris? My head felt like a log flayed out of its bark. My ribs were an unbroken ache, and Tamra was almost openly smirking. Fine. Ugh, just fine. Standing up required most of my remaining strength. Why don't you take a hot shower? I didn't even argue. Most of the time, whether the water was lukewarm or warm didn't seem to matter. The idea of hot water, another luxury enjoyed by the Brotherhood and Nilan, never seemed more welcome.